Media at McGill is a hub of research, scholarship, and public outreach on issues and controversies in media, technology, and culture. Visit us online at media.mcgill.ca. That such an appellation is only applied to people who are enemies of the West at a particular given point and not to politicians belonging to the West, even though the conditions they have created are much worse than they've happened almost anywhere else. So the coverage here in the case of Iraq has been very muted, very muted indeed, because if public opinion in the West was shown pictures every single day, of what has been happening in Iraq, there would be anger, have no doubt about it. There would be real anger, crossing political lines, crossing all lines. People would be angry that this is being done. But it's not reported. About two years ago, a year and a half ago, I was in the tiny Arab state of Qatar, literally a dot. And this state, tiny state, is famous for two things. It has the largest US military base in the Arab world, Al Adid, where the American military, from where the war was launched, by the way, and from where planes flew off to bomb Baghdad. And it also is the center of Al Jazeera television, probably the most radical in terms of reporting television network in the world. And I was visiting to give a lecture <coughs> in Qatar. And I asked for permission. They said, what would you like to do? You know, is there anything you would like to see? And I said, I'd like to see the US military base. Uh, and I'd like to go to Al Jazeera television, because these are your two big tourist attractions. <laughs> and they said, you can't go to the base. That's not permissible. But you can certainly go to see Al Jazeera. So I said, OK, I'll settle for that. Uh, <clears throat> and I went and talked to the the director of Al Jazeera, and I said, be honest with me. I, if you want, I won't even report it. But do you have any censorship? And he said, look, we have a self-denying ordinance. We don't mention the Qatari regime. It's a tiny part of the world. No one cares. We don't discuss Qatar. But on every other issue we write, we speak, we film what we want. So I said, well, that's remarkable. And he then said, oh, but hang on. There was an open attempt at censorship just two weeks ago, two weeks before you arrived. And I said, what was that? He said, you know, we have 36 television crews in Iraq, in different parts of the country, covering what is going on for our viewers. And one of our crews in Baghdad actually captured on film a, a tank coming out onto the street, targeting a car, hitting the car, burning the people in it alive. And we had photographs of who was in the car because our team just happened to be there and wondering what was going on. And in the front of the car, there was a young couple. And in the back of the car were their two kids. And the car burnt up with the family in them. So he said, we felt this was an important news item and led our news with this the minute the film arrived, with our correspondent saying what he had to say. He said, when the third news bulletin was being read, the security guards at the television station came running in, and they said to me, sir, the American military is arriving. <laughs> so he said, I said, what? And they said, the, you know, the uh, jeeps, armored carriers are on the way. They've just entered the compound. And he said, just as he said that, the general, senior US general walked into my office with his phalanx of armed guards and said, I've just been watching what you're putting out on your television channel, and this is absolutely disgraceful. So the guy said, I remained very calm. And he said, I won't hide it from you. I was a bit scared as well. But I remained calm, and I said, what exactly that we have reported upsets you, General? And he said, it's images of this sort that create anti-Americanism in the Arab world. <laughs> so I said, what did you say? He said, what could I say? I was speechless. Finally, he said, I said, but General, isn't it what you do? that creates this anger rather than what we show. But he said, but you shouldn't show it. 
So then uh, uh, there was an argument and the guy finally said, and the general then demanded an apology. Said, I, we want an apology that this was a decontextualized item you showed and you didn't know, you didn't say what was in the mind of the commanding officer when he issued fire. So he said, well, we can't read people's minds. We just saw a tank destroying a car with civilians in it. But then he said, General, when we went to cover the war in Afghanistan, you bombed our headquarters in Afghanistan. When we started to cover the war in Iraq, we told you, we sent to the Pentagon where our offices were because of the ex Afghan experience, and we said, this is where we are, <clears throat> these are our exact coordinates, please give them to your pilots and make sure they don't hit us. And, this, and he said, you used those coordinates to target our offices and you killed Tariq Ayub, our chief war correspondent in Baghdad, which was filmed. You sent in helicopter gunships with rockets and as he was reporting, he was hit by a rocket and died immediately. So if it's time for apologies, why don't you start by apologizing for what you've done to us? And, <clears throat> And he said the general then walked out. And he said that is the only concrete attempt to stop us reporting what we report every single day and every week from this particular war zone in the Arab world. Now that's interesting. And one reason for the hostility to Al Jazeera is not that these people are raving left-wingers or anything nutty like that. Far from it. It's that they show images that counter everything that is being shown on the Western media networks or not being shown at all. It's alternative images. That's what they provide. And that's what creates the anger. And we now know Tony Blair admitted it before he uh, was got rid of. It came out in the British press that before they launched the war in Iraq, Bush said to Blair, should we take out Al Jazeera before we go to war? It'll solve a lot of problems. Blair claims that the British government said that this would be unacceptable behavior, which is the only time he ever disagreed with Bush, if he did. <laughs> but that is what the British government said, that the Americans wanted to bomb, just so there was no alternative reporting of this war which indicates how important public opinion has become. But now, despite that, despite the strict regulation of images, and often, if you watch on a single day when something's happened in Iraq, as I tend to do, CNN, BBC World, and a few other channels, you will find it's the same image that is shown the same image that is shown on all these channels. But despite that, public opinion remains angry. A majority of citizens in the United States want to withdraw from Iraq, are opposed to the war. In Britain, the figure is now 80%. So that is an interesting thing, which shows that they, one shouldn't overrate the role of the media in creating disinformation because sometimes they go so far that people just switch off and don't believe them at all. This has happened in some countries. And that is a corrective to what sometimes those of us who study the media get very worked up, and rightly so, but we sometimes underestimate the intelligence of the average citizen. And that we should not do. Because if people just believed what they saw in the media, you wouldn't have these high figures that are against the war. Because the American casualties, you know, relatively high, but they're not as high as they have been in previous wars. It's just people see this as an aimless war. So that is the relationship of the bulk of the Western media uh, to the Iraq war. If you look at the print media, there are brave oppositional voices, the Guardian, the Independent in uh, Britain, occasionally the LA Times, you know, will we'll do one or two uh, strong pieces.